My first encounter with a whale shark was on the Ningaloo Reef in Australia. The animal radiated a strong calmness. I was mesmerized and in the following month I had the privilege of encountering these animals every day as a whale shark guide. My next encounter with whale sharks in the Philippines was again fascinating, but was also overshadowed by the number of people who wanted to get very close to the shark. For me, the boundary between respect for the animal and the possibility of an encounter was clearly crossed. Whale sharks are one of the most endangered species on Earth. Among other things, they are fished for their fins, end up as bycatching nets, are victims of boating accidents and suffer from increasing tourism. At the same time, tourism gives the animals the attention they need to be protected. But where's the balance? I want to find more answers on Ligura, the hotspot of whale shark tourism in the Maldives. I meet Chloe from the Maldives Whale Shark Research Program. Together with her colleague Clara, she's leading an expedition to collect data on whale sharks with volunteers. So what's special about Dagura is that it is located at the beginning of the MPA, South Ari Marine Protected Area. It's actually the biggest MPA in the Maldives. It is very special that Dagura is a part of the whale shark, this iconic animal. It is a very special and unique aggregation where we see them year round. So whale sharks have been around for millions of years. The hypothesis is that whale sharks are visiting Southern Marine Protected Area to thermoregulate, and normally we are seeing them cruising very slowly. So they are most likely feeding in deeper waters and coming up to recover from this deep diving. And in 2016, they received a more severe listing and they are currently endangered. The Maldives Whale Shark Research Program is monitoring the status and health of whale sharks in the Maldives, and we're also carrying out community outreach initiatives. First of all, we are collecting vessel information. So we write down the number of vessels we see along the reef. So the name of the vessel, number of people on board, where it's from, activity. We are also collecting environmental variables. So wind speed, wind direction, current, temperature, uh, visibility, other megafauna that we're encountering along the reefs. And then this is allowing us to know the value this marine protected area has. So the, we would know visitation numbers, we would know the economical importance of the area. And then this will also help us to know if tourist numbers are going up and if there's any link to the decrease in whale shark sightings or for instance, injury. You know, with the help of our data and obviously local knowledge that there was an MPA declared in the first place, now we're hoping that there's going to be more protection for it soon um, and where we can, you know, pass these things over to policymakers and then create better policies for protecting whale sharks in the areas they inhabit. Since its foundation, the organization has worked closely with the local community. This creates trust and effective solutions can be implemented together. Ahmed, the former island chief of Digura, tells me about this collaboration. When we uh, started this uh, whale shark research program, before that we uh, don't know how important uh, to protect whale sharks. So whale shark research program uh, gives uh, very good awareness programs and uh, I can say that luck for our communities. Actually, the challenges we face is that uh, the area, uh, Sampa region, is being protected uh, by the government. Sometimes uh, the tourists are very close and they need to touch the whale shark. Uh, they, they want to come first, like a race there. You have been seeing a lot of damages uh, of the whale shark, you know, attacks by the propellers of the uh, boats. Ahmed emphasizes the importance of protecting whale sharks. Back on board, Chloe tells me about the threats the animals face locally. They need to come to the surface to thermoregulate, and while this allows us to see them, this also means that they may be struck by vessels, there may be disturbance, they might not engage with their natural behaviours because there's too many people in the water. In 2020, we released two injury impact studies which found the same thing, basically. So, whereas in 2006, maybe 24% of the whale sharks were seen with injuries, in 2019, 
we actually saw 45%. It does correlate with a steep rise in the number of vessels. These injuries are lacerations, abrasions, and on occasions also amputations. So I was into that. Did you see the whale shark? I didn't. It was busy. Yeah. Um, it was a bit like a sort of whale shark circus. There's no way I would enjoy that. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see a whale shark, but it needs to be just on its terms, not on everyone else's terms. And so I just found it a bit sad. I wonder how it used to be, what has changed in the recent years, and how most tourists perceive the experience. I get the answer from Norshat the owner of the first diving center on Ligura. He has witnessed the development of whale shark tourism since the beginning. The number one attraction here is the whale shark. Every guest who visits the island, that's their number one priority. It's not good uh, how this whole place is managed. It's overcrowded, you know. So the number of uh, whale sharks with injuries are more. And now, most of the time, we see only like one or two sharks a day and then it's 20 to 30 boats, and it's, it means like 200 to 300 guests on the surface. And you see, like, it's, it's not safe for the whale shark or for the tourists who are in the water as well. At the end of these tours, everybody don't enjoy it, you know? First thing they can do is just stop the speed boats going in the area. I hope this place is managed because without whale sharks, people won't be attracted to these islands, to the tourism here. It will be a big change. So I, I do think personally that the longer an encounter is, the happier a guest will leave. But also, this will mean that the whale shark hasn't been forced to dive down to try and avoid this human impact. And this is amazing to see so many people like, you know, care for such an enigmatic species, an endangered species. Um, but sometimes the whale shark is becoming a bit of a, a victim of their own popularity. Social media contributes significantly to this popularity. And when used responsibly, it can promote protection and proper behavior. On the other hand, the self-presentation on social media, for which the sharks are also exploited, can lead to harmful behavior towards the animals and false expectations from the tourists. I paid, so I want to see a whale shark. But that's not how nature works. The whale sharks don't belong to us, and we must always be aware that these encounters are a gift from the oceans to us. Ultimately, the most beautiful encounters in our lives are those that cannot be bought, but happen unexpectedly. My wish for the future for whale sharks would be more effective policies made, more resources given to the, the governing bodies so that they can actually, you know, put these policies into practice, more funding given to young Maldivians so that they can have the opportunity to, to get involved with the research that's happening here. At the end, we are just visitors in this world. We do not own the Earth. Like there's, there's other species too. And I feel like we could help to be the voice for those species who do not have a voice.